Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Uh, welcome to our Zoom call, the Coronavirus Pandemic Global Prayer Revival. I am very excited to be with you today. Uh, we're looking for at least one or two other pastors to be joining us here shortly. I do know that uh, there's having some network issues down in uh, Durban, South Africa. Uh, so hopefully he'll get that resolved. And then we'll be looking for Pastor Jones to come online with us out of Chicago here momentarily. Uh, I am very excited to have a good friend of mine who I've made, uh, made friends within the last couple of two or three weeks, uh, Evangelist Good Luck Awuzer. Uh He is in Nigeria. I'm hoping and praying that the network will stay stable so that we can hear uh, his ministry as well. One of the main things that we're doing here is that we want to talk about God. We want to talk about the kingdom of God. What we found out is that there's been a lot of talk about the coronavirus. Uh, every time I turn on my television, I see plenty of discussion regarding the virus uh, on all the news outlets, all the sports, all the sports stations. People are talking about the virus. But one of the things that I don't see, I don't see people talking about God as it relates to what he's doing. So one of the things we're doing is we want to uplift God's kingdom. We want to share the gospel. And then we want to hear from pastors, ministry leaders from around the world on what is going on and how the virus is affecting them in their particular region. I see my good buddy, my good friend, Pastor Jones, has joined us. Welcome, sir. Thank you. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Uh, what, I would, what I would like to do is uh, Evangelist Woozer would like to come and give us a, uh, a, uh, a bring us into worship with a song. Uh, I would like to say one thing. I, re I said this last week. I thought when I heard Evangelist's name, uh, Good Luck Awuzer, when I heard his first name, it threw me off a little bit because I never met anybody with the name Good Luck. And it threw me off. And I, and I talked to him about it. I talked to one of my buddies over in Ghana, uh, Bishop Apute, and he said, David, there's a lot of Africans who feel like Americans, Black Americans have strange names. So it's a cultural thing, and I, and I love it. And, and then he also went on to tell me that when people in Africa name their children, generally they name their children off of something that means something. They, they give them a name of a specific meaning, just like in the Bible. You know, when they name their children, it was a meaning. It meant something. And so I really respect that. Uh, and obviously, when his parents named him, he, they said, he's good luck, bringing us good luck. So uh, I really appreciate the differences in the culture. And, you know, it's, this is an opportunity for us to learn more as well. Uh, Evangelist Awuzer, please take it away, sir. All right, thank you. I just wanted to give out a little, a little song that uh, uh, makes me happy every time. Uh, when I sing this song, I'm very happy because I know God is the owner of my heart. I am your vessel. I am your vessel. I want to love you more and more. You are the potter. I am your vessel. Yeah, we are Jesus the I am your vessel. I am your vessel. I want to love you more and more. You are my father. I am your vessel. Yeah, we are Jesus. Yeah, we are. 
I want to love you more and more. Oh, I am your vessel. You are my father. Yeah, we have Jesus' love. I, I just want to let people know that we are the best God is our father. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, brother. You have a very melodic voice. Uh, what I would like to do now is uh, enter into prayer. I'm going to bring us into uh, the throne room. Uh, our Father and our God, Lord, we thank you so much for the privilege and the opportunity to come together, uh, brothers around the world. Uh, dear God, we say thank you for the privilege to work in your vineyard. Lord, we say thank you for your plan of salvation. Wow. God, thank you for bringing us into the fold through your son, Jesus the Christ. Jesus, we say thank you for your obedience on the cross that allows us to have eternal life. We say thank you for the salvation that you died for, that you bled for, we say thank you for the salvation that you've given us, that you resurrected for. We thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would guide this meeting, that you would guide our minds, guide our tongues, so that we can uplift God's kingdom. I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. All right, all right. Well, I would like to begin this broadcast uh, with my brother in Chicago, Illinois, uh, Pastor Rodney Jones is in Chicago, Illinois, on the south side. Uh, he pastors uh, New New Nation Anointed Ministries. Uh, actually, if I if I stand this correctly, I believe he took this church over from his grandmother. Took the church over from his grandmother. Uh, he comes from a a large family of believers that are working in the vineyard right now. Uh, his sons are international musicians. I'll let him tell you more about that if he chooses to. But, I mean, this brother is very anointed. Uh, he's one of my mentors. Um, on If you go to YouTube and pull up Rodney Jones, Pastor Rodney Jones Sunday School, you'll find him there. Uh, because of uh, Pastor Jones, I decided to start my own YouTube channel, Teaching Sunday School. And I'm going to tell you, this brother, he teaches me. When I watch him, I get meat, meat. Uh, he does a word study. Uh, it's not a general topic study, but it's a word study. He goes deep into it. And so if you have an opportunity, I would really strongly advise, go to his YouTube channel, subscribe to his YouTube channel. It is a beautiful channel. Uh, he's got about, shucks, he has about 20,000 folks that tune into him at any given time. So that tells you right there, that speaks volumes. That's fruit. That's fruit, brothers and sisters. Anyways, uh, Pastor Jones, I would like for you to, if you would, introduce yourself, uh, tell us about your ministry, and then, Pastor, if you could talk about how this uh, virus has affected your particular ministry and what type of initiatives you have had to take uh, because of it. Can't hear you. Your audio is gone. Can't hear you. Oh, there it is. We well, yeah. found it. There it is. There it is. Okay, you have to push the right button. Praise yes, the Lord. Sir. Yes, sir. I was trying to find it. Yeah, they, they keep moving the, the unmute button, but I praise God for yeah. that. Thank you, my friend and my brother, Elder David. And it's good to see my good friend and new friend, Evangelist Goodluck. I love that name. And uh, God is wonderful. Yes, I, I was installed as pastor of the new nation and Order ministries church in chicago in 2019 it's been a year now since april the church is 40 years old my grandmother started the church some 40 years ago and i joined forces with her in 2014 and the lord saw 
equipped uh, to pass the mantle. And I thank God. Right now, um, we have shifted over, as everyone else is doing, to the technology in this day and time. And so, but we still are moving forward. Matter of fact, every Tuesday, what we're doing is we try to feed the members of the church. Uh, so we mm. have food that's brought to the church every Tuesday. And as a matter of fact, it started even before this pandemic started. And I, I praise God for a friend of mine, a pastor friend of mine. I won't say his name right now without his permission. He got us hooked up with that. And each week they bring food. He brings it personally to the church. And then my wife and the team comes and set it up in boxes. And then we text the members, members just first, because we try to make sure that the membership is taken care of. And so we feed the members. They are able to get groceries for their homes. And then there's a senior residence right beside our church or right on the same street. Uh, we send out a message to them and allow them to come because I believe that our seniors are our foundation. They are our roots. They are what we need. They are the, the back structure and the backbone of our very culture. And I thank God for them and you can never overlook them. And so we make sure that they are able to come and feast as well, get whatever you want. Then lastly, we open up the doors and set a table out and we allow the community to come and get to balance of the food and, and and I thank God that we're able to do this weekly. Part two is we have a prayer line that we pray is a conference every night, nine o'clock and every morning, 6 a.m. We have a group text chat where I text everybody's the group chat. We make sure everybody's fine from time to time. Got to hear some voices. Every now and then I need to hear you so I can know uh, what's going on. And every now and then we open up the church so that members can come in if they want to go in and pray, whatever the case may be, you have that right. And then lastly, we have, of course, Facebook Live, our church is on a private group so that we can continue our weekly Bible study where they can post their questions and give answers. And then we have our Sunday school, which is uh, live also on Sundays. We chose not to open it up to the general popular uh, population so that we can keep it within the confines of the church so we can still feel the love and the warmth from each other. That's what we've been doing. Now, I'll say this and I'll give it back to you. I encourage them not to watch so much news because what happens is the more news you watch, the more focus you focus on death, sickness, infections, infections, and hurt and pain and sorrow, the more you cue in on that, the less your faith is, and then the more you uh, lose focus on God. And so I try to encourage, it's okay to watch the news every now and then, you need to keep up with what's going on, but don't be engulfed in news, because look at Peter. Peter walked on the water. Now, the rest of the disciples didn't want to do it. They wanted to, but they was afraid. But Peter walked on water. And I'm here to tell you, like my bishop said, if you want to walk on water, you got to get out of the boat. So Peter got out of the boat. But the Bible said something very interesting. The wind became boisterous. It stood up and rose up against him. And it's as if it began to brag against Peter. And Peter lost his focus. And then he cried out unto the Lord God. And so I encourage us never to lose the focus on God. God is the key. He is our source and our resource. And without him, we can do nothing. I'm going to unmute. Well, I'm going to mute. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. I love, you know, it's really amazing how now we have a church without walls. And I remember last week, one of the pastors, uh, Pastor DJ Knox had said this, that God has taken his church back to the days of Acts when we were meeting in homes. And now, now we find ourselves right back in the beginning. <laughs> we're meeting in our homes. You know, people are doing church, watching church from the confines of their home. And I think, I think it's a beautiful thing because now God has given 
the pastors, he's given the church another opportunity, another uh, gateway and to get the word out. So when we do go back into the temple, we're still going to have our media outlets. Now, I think what you said is one of the main reasons why we why we uh, initiated this Zoom call is because we have so much talk about this virus. I mean, you can get just inundated with this information as 24 seven. I mean, you got all your news outlets out there and it's just talking about the virus. And then what happens, I, I sense a, a, a sense of fear that can come on to one. Because if you look at this thing, it's like, oh, we're about to run out of meat. Oh, you know, for a month ago, we're going to run out of tissue. Oh, you know, and then it just makes you feel like, like there's no hope. It, make, it can make people feel like there's no hope. So I totally agree with you, Pastor. It's essential that we focus on God. It's very critical. Uh, Pastor, Pastor Evangelist uh, uh, Awuzer, I would like to pass the mic over to Nigeria. And sir, if you could talk about uh, some of the effects that the virus is having in, in your community. And then uh, Pastor Jones, when he finished, I'm going to ask you to pray. Uh, but I uh, will, if you could talk about how the virus is affecting your region, please. Thank you. Um, in Nigeria here right now, uh, we are having uh, an increase every day, an increase every day. I think last week, when we started this program, uh, we are uh, at a rate of 2,000 uh, and uh, in 2,950. But right today, be Monday, a new week, uh, we are uh, up to four. 4,025, 4,025, that is the confirmed cases, uh, for now, wait, 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 did I hear, did I hear you say you were at 2,000 last week and 4,000 this week? Yeah, yeah. Wow, we, wow. We have 4,000 this week, so we, wow. we, we have a total death in our country, um, uh, 148 deaths right now. 148 deaths in Nigeria. Um, the uh, the coronavirus has affected our economy so bad. Uh, you can see where well, Nigeria is living a, a life with uh, our crude oil. You know, we deal with crude oil, and that is where the life of Nigeria uh, come from. Uh, the economy of Nigeria depreciated because uh, the crude oil that uh, one barrel was uh, at the rate of 32 to 40 is now at the rate of 25 uh, to 20. So you can see the economy is gradually going down, down day by day. And I will say critically from this uh, from this media right now that. Um, the case concerning coronavirus uh, only has a cure from the blood of Jesus Christ. I told people that the only antidote to coronavirus is the blood of Jesus Christ. If you really have the blood of Jesus Christ, definitely such person has gotten the real antidotes. So in my country, the churches are trying, there are been a lot of things happening that the church is still locked down. And it just stopped the mode of our worship and the way we uh, we reach out to people. Uh, the, the case of coronavirus, you can shake anybody you can come close to any uh, person. You can uh, visit any household. So this uh, has become a problem where you cannot meet someone face to face. Therefore, we decide as a church to go online. 
in social media to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe through this social media, we have also generated many means to which we can preach more, even more than what we have been doing before. It has created a lot of impressions into the life of many. Now, many that have not been going to church now have church in their house. They can worship God, they can praise God. Like when I was discussing with you yesterday, I said that most of my neighbors don't pray in the money. But now, due to coronavirus, they can pray in the morning, they can worship God, and every day by day, you see them coming out with one thing or the other in order to preach the gospel themselves, not someone preaching to them. God bless you, sir. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Evangelist. Good. Amen. Amen. It's really amazing how uh, how important, even now, is how important it is for us to keep in mind our social distancing. I want to emphasize that uh, because this virus is still active. And folks, as you heard, in Nigeria, it doubled in just a week's time. And so it's critical that we be mindful to wear our mask when we have to go out to the store, to wear our mask, and also keep our distances and make sure you wash your hands. Wash your hands. I mean, I checked my hands are so dry. I wash my hands so much lately. I've never washed my hands this much ever in my life, but it's critical, it's very important. Uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor Jones in Chicago, I want to come over to you. Uh, I noticed that uh, um, there's been, what, I know what we talked about this last week, that there's been a, uh, hmm, this is tough, there's been, and it's, and it's, there's been a lot of deaths in, uh, from pastors and leaderships uh, within probably all denominations, I'm sure, but we're aware more of what's been going on in the Kojic denomination, because I know and where I live in Michigan, I've been hearing quite a bit about it. And I wonder if you could speak to that a little bit. Yes, sir. Um, we have lost over, I shouldn't say the word loss. I don't think believers are lost from the, from the transition, the sleeping. Um, but there's over 30, 30 pastors uh, which would include uh, bishops and superintendents. Uh, we now, I do understand and know that we have many that have made transitions. One of our problems is, is um, we're not sure who all transitioned due to the COVID-19 virus itself. And so I'm kind of careful, but we are reaching close to the number 40 as far as uh, our denomination, the Church of God in Christ, including two general board members that have transitioned. Now, once again, it is unclear to me their the actual call. And, uh, and that's another thing about the news. Uh, <laughs> everybody that transitions may have a symptom of it, but it doesn't mean that that's what took it out or took them out, but that's what they always focus on and so yes it has hit us it has hit us tremendously and that's how many that we know of uh, matter of fact um uh, even here in chicago and in, in illinois there are others that we're hearing about constantly now in 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 cook county which is the county mm -hmm. that i live in we have right now some 1673 deaths in, in Illinois itself, it wow. records 3,406. And I'm reading straight from the stats. They're saying that that's how many deaths that we've had, at least from uh, a month ago up until this day. And so it, wow. has, it has taken, it has cost a lot of lives. And there are, and there's the, the bad part about it, there's a restriction here in Illinois and in Chicago 
as far as funerals is concerned. And it's getting stricter and stricter. Uh, many people are hurting because they can't properly mourn or bury their loved ones. Many that are in the hospital that are in ICU, they can't have visitation. And you and I both know a lot of times we're healed by the presence of a loved one. Because the Bible says, laugh the death good like a medicine. And when I open up my eyes, though they may be weak, and I see uh, Evangelist Goodluck or if, if I see Elder uh, David Rhodes come in the room, it does something to my spirit. It, it gives me the strength to be able to move forward. But at this time, there's restrictions. Nobody's really going to the hospital for any other reason other than that. And but there is good news. Uh, we just had a, a bishop that was that came to and he came, I believe, off of the ventilator. And praise God, we're rejoicing for him. Uh, we have two pastors in our Chicagoland area. One is a superintendent. Both of them were on ventilators and one was induced. They had induced a coma on him. But praise God, his wife and his family stood outside that hospital. One, his brother blew the shafar and called on the name of the Lord. <laughs> and they declared the war against that virus. And he came to and he is alive and he is well. And so is my other friend. So uh, it's, it's just it's each individual. So there is some joy and there is some good news in all that we're going through. Now, I'm not afraid of the virus. I'll say that I'm not afraid of it because I believe if it takes me out, the Bible did say precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I'm precious <laughs> in his sight. So we, as a believer, we should never live fearful. A believer should always live knowing that God got everything in the palm of his hand. So yes, it has affected us and it's still, uh, we hear in news every single day of someone that is transitioning. Uh, but then uh, we hear news also of those who have recovered and who have come out through prayer. Amen, amen. That, that's a beautiful picture. I'm imagining this brother here blowing the horn, blowing the trumpet, bringing down the walls of coronavirus. Yes. Yes, sir. That's that's a beautiful picture. Uh, I would I would like uh, if you if you would, sir, please, if you could lead us in the prayer. Yes, sir. Father, I thank you and I bless your holy name, God. There is none greater than you. God, your word declares that the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. Father, I bless your holy name. You're a great God. You're an awesome God, and there's none greater, none mightier. There's no God other than you, and we thank you for being the God that has this whole world in the palm of his hand. We thank you, oh God, for keeping us alive and for watching over us and for protecting us. We thank you for creating us, oh God, out of this earth, and we thank you because, God, you reign, and nothing takes place without your permission, and nothing is greater than God. God, you're an awesome and a mighty. You are a powerful God. You are the great Lord of Lords and King of Kings. We thank you for waking us up this morning and giving us a sound mind. God, we praise your holy name because you're an awesome God. You're an awesome wonder. We thank you for even the good days and for the bad days. And we bow before your goodness and before your greatness. And we pray, oh God, your continued will to be done in our life. Father, bless, bless, bless your people here and everywhere. Bless those that have been affected by this virus, God. Bless those whose loved ones have transitioned. Bless those that are still struggling in the ICU, oh God. Bless, bless our seniors who are mostly affected by this. And bless every every beloved, every individual, oh God, like only you know how to do. We thank you, God, because there is nothing powerful than you. We thank you because there's nothing more knowledgeable than you. And there is nothing and no one greater than you, not even the devil. And we bow before your goodness and your greatness. God, you're an awesome and a mighty God that loves his people. We thank you for the Holy Spirit 
who has given us life and who have introduced us unto you, the Father and the Son. We praise you, Holy Jesus, for the blood that you shared on Calvary. You didn't have to do it, but you did. You gave us life. You gave us help. You gave us strength, and you forgave us of our sins. And Lord, your word declares that with your stripes, we are healed. And Father, we pray your word which says that if we ask anything in your name and according to your will, that you hear us. And if you hear us, God, we have the petition and we're asking, we're asking right now for healing in our land, healing in the White House, healing in the mind of the President of the United States. God, lead God and direct him in a plain path, Father, because you told us to pray for kings and for those that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life we pray for our governors that they will make a righteous decision. And Father, we pray for every church, every pastor, every leader, every first responder, oh God. We thank you for the responders, for the police, for the firemen, for the nurses, oh God, even for the man of God, the preacher, Lord, who you sent on this earth to declare war against sin. Father, we pray this in your precious son, Jesus' name. I thank you for my friend David and my friend Goodluck that you would continue to bless their ministry, even right where they are. Bless those that are affected in Nigeria. Bless those that are affected in Michigan. Bless those that are affected in Illinois. God, your word, let it go forth. Let it bring healing. We'll praise you. We'll tell men of your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. Strong, powerful prayer. Thank you. Mm. Anointed ministry. Anointed ministry. What is what is your address over in Chicago? The address is 1700 West 87th Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60620. Yes, and those of you that have just joined us and joined us a little bit later, uh, please check out uh, my brother, Pastor Rodney Jones' YouTube channel. Uh, you will be blessed if you want to. He does a Sunday school, a weekly Sunday school lesson, and that was my inspiration. Pastor was my inspiration into doing the same thing. Uh, so, I, But I'm learning from him, and he does, generally he does two lessons, one of the Union Gospel Press and the other from the standard Sunday school lesson. Uh, and it's been a major blessing for me. So join his YouTube channel and please subscribe. I want to go to the Word. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favorite passages. Uh, it's a passage that I picked up from my, uh, my, uh, my granny. It's one of her favorites. It's my mom's favorite. I have a couple uncles that love this passage. Uh, you who sit down in the high God's presence, spend the night in Shaddai's shadow, say this, God, you're my refuge. I trust in you and I'm safe. That's right. He rescues you from hidden traps, shields you from deadly hazards, his huge outstretched arms protect you. Under them, you are perfectly safe. His arm fends off all harm. Fear nothing. Not wild wolves in the night. Not flying arrows in the day. Not disease that prowls through the darkness. Even though, or not disaster that erupts at high noon. Even though others succumb all around, drop like flies right and left, no harm will even graze you. You'll stand untouched, watch it all from a distance, watch the wicked turn into corpse. Yes, because God's your refuge, and high God's your very own home. Evil can't get close to you. Harm can't come through the door. He ordered his angels to guard you wherever you go. If you stumble, they'll catch you. Their job is to keep you from falling. You walk unharmed among lions and snakes and kick young lions and serpents from the path. If you hold on to me for dear life, says God, I'll give you out, I'll get you out of any trouble. I'll give you the best care. And if you only get to know and trust me, 
Call me and I'll answer. Be at your side in bad times. I'll rescue you. Then throw you a party. I'll give you a long life. I'll give you a drink of salvation. That was Psalms 91. Read that out of the message version. You know, and one of the things that I love about this passage, when you look at the King James Version, God says that he's your buckler and your shield. You know, that King James Version, you can't never get away with from it because it has some beautiful language in there. But I just wanted to give you a different version. When you think about that buckler and that shield, I imagine a warrior. I imagine a warrior. God is our warrior. He's there to help protect us, right? He's our protector, right? When you think about this buckler, what I want you to imagine is a handheld shield, right? It's, it's a small apparatus, maybe about 10 inches in circumference, right? And that's for your up-close battle, right? When something, the enemy gets close to you, you take that, that small shield and bop, bop him upside the head, right? And then you got that long, big shield, right? He's your buckler and your shield. That's that long shield. You've seen it on the movies. It's, a, it's maybe, I would say, four feet tall, five feet tall, right? And that's for that long distance when the enemy tries to attack you with those arrows by night, right? And that's the long distance. They're out there shooting the arrows at you, and God puts that shield up. Boom, he sets that thing in the ground and just protects you. And all the attacks from the enemy just bouncing off that shield, but if somehow one of the little snakes smither and get close to you, God takes that buckler and he bah, chops the head of that snake right off. He says, thank you, God, for protecting me. God says, no harm is going to come to you. And I pray right now that God will continue to put up his hedge around you. Matter of fact, I'm going to ask God to do me a special favor right now. All that are listening, God, I'm going to ask that you would just strengthen that that force around them, strengthen that hedge around them. And God, I'm going to ask that you would continue to bless the folks in Nigeria, Illinois, and here in Michigan. And I'm going to ask that you would bless with food. We know that food is an issue right now. I'm going to ask that you would bless with money. Dear God, bless with resources so that people can go out and get this food. And then, God, I'm going to ask that you come in with your grace anoint us with your grace, because your grace will give us more than money can. God, I'm asking that you would bless us with your mercy. When it's time, God, lift this thing up and give us, let us go outside and enjoy life again, God. I know you're teaching us a lesson through this. It's something that you do with these storms. You know, I'm thinking about, mm, I'm thinking about when you told the disciples to get into the little ship mm, and to go on the other side. And all of a sudden, this big storm came, and water was overtaking the boat. God, I'm thinking about that and how you taught us about faith. You taught us to have faith in you. Folks, it's critical. Do not let this storm overtake our mindset. We have to remain kingdom-minded. We have to stay focused on God. He is our protector. He's our shield. He's our buckler. And like Pastor John said, man, absent from the body is to be present with God. If God decides to bring, take me out, hallelujah, somebody. <laughs> hallelujah. I know somebody might cry and be sad that you're missing me, but I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to be dancing next to God. Woo! Hallelujah. Now think about those angels. Hmm. Now think about those angels in God's temple right now. And they're praising God, Scripture says. Think about this holy temple, this holy temple. I thank God that he's invaded my temple. Mm. I thank God that he's invaded my temple. And because of that, I say, holy, holy, holy. Holy is thy name. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for thinking of David Rhodes. You can put your name in there. Thank you, Father God, for thinking of me. You thought enough of me that you came into my life. You thought enough of me that you died upon the cross, Jesus. Thank you so much for your resurrection. 
Evangelist, good luck. Evangelist, good luck. I would like to hear from you. We got, let's see, what time is it? 3.40. 3.40, I want to give Pastor Jones the last word. But Evangelist, if you could take a couple of minutes. Uh, I want to be done with the broadcast in about 10 minutes. Uh, Pastor uh, Jones is a carpenter by trade. Uh, and because of this pandemic, he had to go back into his trade. Uh, he was rolling real strong in the ministry, 100%, and God was blessing him. But because of this pandemic, he decided, like, I got to get back into what I know, into the carpentry. So I want to give him his last word. Uh, but Evangelist, good luck. Uh, go ahead, sir. Lead us on. to thank God uh, as you were speaking, I, I just hear where you are saying now, faith. But I want to just uh, say that uh, the weapon of warfare of every child of God involves faith. You must win every battle. You must have faith. The fact that faith is so important is that as a child of God, you need to believe God. You need, first of all, believe that God exists. And believe he can heal, he can, he can cancel demons, believe the wonderful work he can do. You also believe that God created you. Most of the people, don't know who their creator is. You are pointed out the voice point of weapon of warfare. We have prayer as a weapon of warfare. Every child of God must pray. What is prayer? Prayer is the direct communication between man and God. If you want to talk to your daddy, you don't stay far to talk to your daddy. You come close to your daddy and tell your daddy what you need. If you are calling your daddy through phone, definitely there is a tool you use as your daddy. The DNA in you is replicating, showing that you, this man that I'm speaking to is my daddy. So when you are speaking to God as your father, in prayer, there is a link, a link, free link, link that can never be interrupted because you know who your father is. You know what he can do. Like me, when I was small, I know very well that my father can pay my school fees. And I go to him and say, Daddy, I want not to pay school fees tomorrow. So my dad will say, okay, I have it. I will pay tomorrow. I will pay next tomorrow. So if you must have the weapon of warfare, you must pray. One, if you are a prayerful person, devil will be far from you. Sickness will be far from you. I can boast on 15 years right now when I cited Jesus Christ. 15 good years as I accepted Jesus Christ. I've never gone to the hospital. And I have been checking myself. I go to people, I say, okay, check me through the lab. No, they will tell me you are 100% perfect. The church make an arrangement for laboratories last uh, year, and the doctor say, what are you taking you and your family? I want to tell them that the weapon of warfare of every child of God is prayer, faith in God. I want to talk about the last one, holiness. You must be holy. The Bible say, without holiness, no eye shall see God. Man must be holy. I and you must be holy. Take away everything that can destroy the incoming of 
the Spirit of God into your life. I always ask a question. If we are committing sin inside our room and we thought that God is not seeing us, does it mean that God is not really seeing us? The psalmist David says, Lord, where will I run to sin against you? Thou will not see me. Holiness is so important. If we look at the book of John 14, verse 30, and it says, Henceforth, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of peace of this world, the prince of this world, cometh, and he has nothing with me. For the prince of this world, cometh. Who are the prince of this world? The one who reigneth, it shall come, it shall give judgment to every soul. I pray to everyone, as you are hearing our voice from different parts of the world, let your weapon of welfare believe to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Evangelist. Thank you so much. Good luck. I appreciate you. Uh, you know, one thing, one thing I can really say about my new friend here, this brother is very excited. He's very enthusiastic about God's kingdom. I mean, uh, he called me up yesterday. We talk almost every day, sometimes two or three times a day. He called me up yesterday. And uh, my wife and I, my wife was feeling a certain kind of way. And I'm in there cooking, you know, I'm preparing the barbecue. And, and all of a sudden, I get a phone call from, from Good Luck in the Nigeria. And he says, he says, Reverend David, I called because I wanted to pray for your wife. Oh, I said, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, God. You know, God is so amazing to me. He, he's just always on time. You know what I'm saying? It's like right. It's like he sent that line of communication way to Nigeria. For him, it's just a drop in the bucket, right? <laughs> but, but he said, good luck. I want you to call David and speak to his wife. Oh, hallelujah. And, and they prayed and prayed and prayed together. It was really a beautiful thing. It was really, really beautiful. Uh, Pastor Jones. Uh, if you would, sir, I would like to give you the last word. Uh, before we do that, I want to uh, let the folks know uh, we will be back online Wednesday if the Lord says the same. Uh, we have Pastor uh, Justin coming out of Durban, uh, South Africa, uh, James Rourke. I, I've done some Sunday school lessons with him. My high school buddy, he's a pastor evangelist, traveled, just got back from India, in fact. On Friday, uh, Pastor Jerry Bishop will be with us. And then tomorrow and Friday, we have Pastor Henderson out of uh, Illinois. He's out of Lansing, Illinois. He'll be with us. In fact, he was a friend of uh, Dr. Clifton Rhodes Jr. And then we have uh, Pastor Neil Martin. Uh, he'll be coming out of South Africa as well on Friday. So we praise God for these uh, men of God that have joined us. If you have a pastor, uh, that you know that would like to join and get part of this ministry, you know, have them connect with me. And we certainly invite women as well. So we thank you for uh, tuning in. Uh, Pastor Jones. There, did I get it? Are we, am I unmuted? Yeah, I'm muted. Uh, I praise God for what's going on. This is a time for the believer to step up in God. This is not a time for the believer to take the back seat. I understand the stay home, but there's some things I enjoy. Uh, my good friend, my new friend, Evangelist Goodluck, and I wrote that down. Yes, we prayer is our tool. It is our weapon. It is our key. Faith in God. I remember when he said that. I remember when Jesus had cast the, he cursed the fig tree. And the matter of fact, the next day when they were on their way back, 
the disciples said, that fig tree that you spoke to is cursed. And Jesus says one thing, and mainly one thing only, he says, have faith in God. And this is not the time for the believers to lose focus, to lose faith. This is not the time for doubt to rise up in the kingdom dwellers. We're kingdom people. We're righteous people. We are sons and daughters of God. We are the blessed we are born again. We have been washed in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We are the born again, baptized believers. We are the on fire for God people. And it's time for us to step up to the plate and lead this country righteously because this country has lost its mind when it comes to God. And the only thing that they know about God is us right now. We are epistles read daily among men. And he says, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify, not you. You ain't getting the glory, Dr. Rose. I'm not getting the glory. None of us is getting the glory. He said that men may glorify the Father. Now notice what he said. He says, let, key word is let. Uh, uh, the only reason why you will let somebody in your house is because they're at the door knocking. The word let lets me know that his presence, it is there. He is there. All I have to do, I don't have to make the light shine. I don't have to invent that, 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 that other fire, that strange fire from another altar. All I have to do is let to allow it because it is already present. The day I gave my life over to the Lord, that light began to shine in my life. And all I have to do is let the fruit of the spirit operate. Just walk around and produce the fruit. Walk around and open up your mouth and be an encouragement to somebody who's walking around with their head down. We're believers. We're kingdom dwellers. We walk in through this earth but our citizenship is in heaven. I'm among those that are sanctified and he has placed me in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. I'm a child of the king and I'm joint as, joint as the Bible said with them. Now it said, if I suffer, if I suffer, I'm joint as. And I love this about Abraham. The Bible said he staggered not at the promises of God. He didn't stagger at God's promise. I know they say Abraham tried to help God, Sarah tried to help God, but my Bible says that Abraham staggered not and he moved against hope. Well, what was the hope? Hope was his wife was old, her body was dead, and she was barren. All of that, the Bible said he didn't even consider his own body dead, but all he knew is God promised. God promised him that he would have a child and he knew that the same God who promised it is the same God that is able to perform it. And so based on the promises and the, the fact that God is able to perform it, Abraham was fully persuaded and didn't stagger at the promises of God. So I say to every kingdom dweller, every child of God, whether you are infected, affected, or whether the case may be, regardless of where you are, I need you to turn your focus to, to uh, uh, Psalms 22 and 1, which states that, I'm sorry, Psalms 24, that states that the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. And there's a key word I like to look at. That's it. I like looking at key words. I love how the word Lord is all cap. It is all cap. It is the Yahweh, new terms now for Jehovah. But that word means the self-existent one. He is the self-existent, which means there is no beginning to God. There is no ending to God. There is no creator over God. That means there's nobody greater than God. God is the one who created everything under heaven, and time does not exist in heaven. Time does not exist. And you don't believe it? I always say this. God can undie your situation. He can undie, undie your situation. How do I know this? because the Bible lets me know that Elijah was dead and stinking for four days. But when Jesus stood where Lazarus was, Jesus did one thing and one thing only, called him by his name and Lazarus came out. 
because when God is in the room, he can undie your situation. Yes, that's improper English. That's all right. I grew up on the west side of Chicago. I have a right to use improper English. He undied the situation. This thing here is nothing for God. The Bible says, is there anything too hard for God? And the answer is no. So the earth is the self-existing. Matter of fact, God is self-existing. God is self-sufficient. He has no need. And even if he had a need, he is empowered to, to, to meet his own need. And therefore, he, is, he doesn't need anything because he's the almighty, he's the all-wise, he's the self-sufficient. He is God the creator. He is God the sustainer. He is God the provider. He is God the coverer. He is God the maker. He is God that rules heaven, earth, and hell, and nothing is greater than God. So I say the kingdom dwellers, I say the preachers, I say the missionaries, I say to the believers, the Bible says these signs shall follow those that believe. What signs is it? They shall lay hands on the sick. Get the laying hands. I know they said don't put your hands on nobody. But the question is, who's reported you're going to believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. So the earth is the Lord's, the fullness of the world and they that dwell therein. That means everybody from the president down to the ant belongs to God and everything is in the authority. Everything is in the power. Everything is under the control because God is sovereign in power. And the word sovereign lets me know that he is unlimited in power. He is omnipresent everywhere. He's omnipotent, all power. In other words, power, not, he don't just have power, but power comes from God. He invents power. Power radiates from him, and there is no power greater than him. So I'm a believer that God has this whole earth in the palm of his hand. And regardless of what man says, regardless of what a virus says, regardless of what a president says, regardless of what the devil says, the Bible lets us know that when the enemy comes in like a storm or like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it. And I'm alive and I'm well today because he told me to live. I'm done. Wow. Woo. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you for that word. It's a strong word. Strong word. Thank you, brother. Wow. Now you see why I love his YouTube Sunday School channel, because he gets to preach it like this when he's sharing the word and teaching. It's a brother is well studied, a uh, great teacher, a great preacher. Uh, thank you so much, Pastor. And also thank you, Evangelist. Uh, good luck, Awuzer. We appreciate you, too. Uh, I love you both. Uh, I'm, we're going to sign off now. Uh, please join us on Wednesday at 3 o'clock. And remember, keep your trust in the Lord. Keep your trust in the Lord. Thank you so much for tuning in. We love you. Share the video. Like the video. Share with your network. God bless you. We'll see you on Wednesday.